good stuff. It's talking about some things that you want to talk about this morning. You want to hear about, amen? Because <clears throat> what it will do, it will give you encouragement, amen? You know, I spoke the other night on angel food, talking about uh, corn from heaven. And I spoke uh, <clears throat> uh, the next night, I believe, or the next morning, or uh, un unbelief, and we, we went through there. And then I spoke about the five departments last uh, Sunday night, the five departments of the underworld, which is called hell. And uh, God moved in that uh, service. So today, guess what he wants me to minister on? He wants me to minister on heaven. Amen. Praise God. And that's where we are. That's our direction this morning is to go to heaven and be with our Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about heaven this morning. Amen. We're going to encourage each other and talk about it. You know, there's uh, three heavens we're going to talk about this morning. One of them is the, the heavens and the clouds up there, you know. And above them clouds is what? The starry skies. And the Bible says, uh, then there's the planet heaven. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. And if you got your Bible and you want to follow with me uh, uh, this morning, Ron, Brother Ronnie will be uh, putting some uh, stuff on the uh, screen this morning. Uh, Y'all follow with me. But, you know, I got to studying this message and looking at it. And by the way, I'll be preaching tonight. Uh, Brother Nathan won't be able to get in tonight uh, because he's exhausted. I know he is coming back on that missionary field. So I'll be preaching tonight. And uh, if you can bring somebody with you, I'll be preaching tonight on the seven proofs. Uh, he is uh, the only God. And I'm going to show you in God's word. Amen. So let's look uh, this morning, though, about heaven uh, and what God has for us this morning. I want to go uh, to, we're talking about uh, heaven is created by God. Before the earth was created, we see it, and it talks about it in the dateless past. It's what we're going to look at a little bit today. And heaven, you know, guess what? It's, it has materials, uh, uh, and it's brought into existence uh, by God's word. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at some of the materialistic things that's in heaven. You know, you look at heaven, you don't really think about it, but hey, they are people living in heaven that come off of this earth right now that's alive. Enoch and Elisha are the ones. I, I'm getting a little ahead of my message this morning, but I want to tell you this morning, Enoch about 5,000 years ago, and the Bible says he walked with the Lord, and the Lord took him. That's what God says, amen, and took him in his uh, earthly body, and he's been, I'm jealous of Russell. He's been living up there for 5,000 years enjoying heaven up there, and we've been down here uh, going through all this stuff, amen. But he's in heaven, but I want to tell you, I truly believe it will be Enoch that will come back to this earth and uh, be one of the witnesses uh, that will uh, step down in Jerusalem for three and a half years and come against the Antichrist for three and a half years. It talks about the two witnesses. It talks about Elisha. I know he's going to be one of them. He was carried up by a fire church into heaven alive, by, by the way. And he's been up there for a few thousand years. They've been up there really enjoying themselves. But there's going to come a time that they got to do their work and the purpose of uh, some more work. They did great work while they were here, but they got to do some more work on this earth. They're going to come down as the witnesses in Jerusalem uh, when the Antichrist steps up and they're going to be calling fire down from heaven and doing some supernatural miracles and the world's not going to like it and they're going to do that for a while and nothing can hurt them or, or come against them in any way but I want to tell you uh, right now praise God uh, eventually they will die they will be killed in the streets of Jerusalem and the world will be looking up on them and some of the world will be celebrating. Oh, we got rid of them dudes uh, that wanted to talk about God. Well, you know it's going on around us everywhere. If you talk about God and his son Jesus, uh, the world don't like that. They're already coming against it in a big way. There's big uh, uh, antichrist movement going on right now. You see, the antichrist is fixing to sit down. Uh, he's fixing to come and do some of the things. You know, ain't it nice that we got the Bible that tells what's going to happen to us? Amen. We got God's word and we can see what's going to happen to us, praise God. But we're going to be able to look at that and see. But I'll tell you right now, I was talking to a lady, uh, me and my wife was talking to her yesterday, and she was talking about the Antichrist. Uh, how are you going to know the Antichrist? I ain't got to worry about it, and you ain't either. You got Jesus in your heart. Why? You don't have to worry about the Antichrist because you got Jesus in your heart, and you're a believer, and you a child of God. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Now, you're going to get raptured out of here before the Antichrist comes on the scene. But personally, I truly believe that the Antichrist is probably alive right now. He's in Syria, and he's getting 
getting ready to step on the scene. So I'm here to tell you this morning, you better be right with the Lord. You better get right with the Lord because he's fixing to call his children home. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about it. Now I want to tell you, God wants me to minister some this morning on heaven. So when we get raptured out of here, where are we going? We're going straight to heaven and be with the Lord thy God for seven and a half years when we get raptured. And we know what the Bible says, seven and a half years we'll be with the Lord. And uh, we'll be up there at the Lord's Supper and do all those things. And then after seven years, the Antichrist will be ruling down here on this earth <clears throat> in a terrible way like the earth has never known before. It will be so terrible down here. Well, we see that coming on the scene, don't we? You know, we can look around the world right now and uh, parts of the world is on fire right now. It's all around us, y'all. There's people being killed and, and it's all because of religion. That's what uh, the warring and fighting's going on. You see, the devil knows his time is short, so he's uh, bringing up his uh, army to try to defeat and destroy all the righteous people uh, of this world and discourage those uh, that uh, uh, so they won't choose to follow Jesus. But I'm here to tell you this morning, praise God, greater in he that's in us uh, than he that's in the world. And he is defeated already. Hallelujah. Praise God. But he's going to have his little moment, three and a half years over there in uh, Jerusalem. He'll have his little moment over there, uh, three and a half years. But we'll be in heaven when that's going on. I tell you right now, the way I read and study my Bible, I sure don't want to be down here when it's going on. Because you know why? The conscience uh, <coughs> of the world is the church. Did you know that? The conscience of the world is the church. I'm going to tell you. Why? Because, uh, you know, we're the one that's standing against right and wrong. We're the one that stand up and say, that's wrong, don't do that. Because our God says this and our Bible says this and he told us not to do that and it's wrong, it's a sin against God, don't do it. Well, we are the conscious of the world and praise God, when we get raptured out of here, the conscience is going to be gone. It's not going to be the government and the people and all that. See, we're going to be gone. The people that believers of Christ are going to be raptured out of here. And I'm excited about that this morning. We got something to look forward to, ain't we? Let's look at this scripture right here. Boy, I get wound up again. Let's look at uh, Psalms 11, 4. It talks about the Lord's throne in heaven. The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne in where? Is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try, the children of men. Now I'm here to tell you right now, he is the king of kings and the Lord of Lord. He is the creator. Heaven was created before even earth was. He sets up there, praise God. He's a, he is the uh, uh, mighty uh, God and he is uh, in the dateless past. He's always been. He, he's always been, y'all. And he's created mankind and woman, and he created the earth. And let me tell you what, he liked it. And uh, so he's seen some bad things going on because uh, man wouldn't obey his commandments. You know, uh, it's not a bad thing to obey command, uh, God's commandments because God's commandments are commandments, and God knows if you obey them, it's going to be good for you and your life here upon this earth. Did you know that? It ain't something he gave you a big strict uh, dictatorship up there and all of that. He give you free will to do what you want to do. If you want to go against God's commandments, you can do that. But there's a penalty that you must pay when you do that. And uh, for uh, many, there's a penalty of eternal uh, death in a place called hell. I preached about some of that last week. Now, I'm here to tell you, but if you cry out to the Lord and become a believer and follow him, you're righteous before the Lord because of his son Jesus, amen? And all your sins have been forgiven, praise God, and we're not worthy of that, but he has done that for you and I. He has paid a price that's so great to, for you and I, we could never pay him back. But he loves us so much, amen? He loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we're going to have everlasting life with him. You see, he's up in heaven, and now one day he's going to come back and rule and reign here with his son Jesus uh, uh, for eternity on this earth. Now think about it. He's going to be on this earth for eternity uh, and rule and reign, and we're going to be with him. 
in our immortal body, by the way, in that immortal body, uh, sin, uh, diseases, all that stuff's going to be gone from this earth. It's going to be a what? A sinless society, praise God. Now let's look a little bit further right here. Let's look at Psalms 8, 3 through 9. It talks about the heaven, uh, the work of the fingers of God. Let's look right here and see when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. You know, you can just look around, can't you? And you can see God out there. You know, these uh, people that don't want to believe, but you look at the moon, the stars, and the skies, and everything out there, you can see God. You can see it's done by a great creator. Amen. It wasn't no big boom and it come in existence. Uh, the Bible says uh, God created. He spoke the word and it was created. Amen. Praise God. Look here. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man uh, that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and had crowned him with glory and honor. Now, you know, uh, uh, our Lord Jesus, uh, uh, he came to this earth. He was deity. He was God, God the Father, God the Son, the God, the Holy Ghost. And he said, uh, I'll go down and I'll give the innocent blood, which was his blood shed for you and I. Uh, it was a, not of man, but it was innocent blood. He shed it for you and I. He came down and he was even lower than the angels uh, when he was down here, but he relied on the same thing that we do. He relied on the sweet Holy Ghost uh, to, to help uh, uh, do the works that needs to be worked. You see, God gave us a, a good down payment on what we got to look forward to, didn't he? He gave us the Bible, number one. Man, that's a good thing. You can get in there and see what's going to happen and what's going on and everything. And his word is truth and it's holy, hallelujah. And we can see that. And what else did he give us? Uh, he gave us the Holy Ghost uh, to be and dwell with us uh, while we're here until we get to be with him. But when we get in heaven, that's what we're talking about uh, 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 here this morning. Let's look a little bit further and look at Isaiah 45, 5. There's no God beside me. I really like that. Matter of fact, I'll be preaching on some of that tonight. Look at right here uh, in Isaiah 45, 5. Beside him, there is no other God. You see, the world's got to come to reality. Man tries to make God, doesn't he? Now, man tries to make soap operas uh, their God sometimes or materialistic things out there, shopping at the mall or playing golf. Uh, he tries to make, sometimes that is their God. That's the wrong kind of God, ain't it? And back uh, in the ancient days and some of that, they had wrong kind of gods and they got them today. Man has tried to make all kind of materialistic gods to take the place of our God. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. What did that say? I am the Lord and there's none else. There's no God beside me. I girded thee through thy has not known me. I want to tell you here uh, this morning that besides God, there is no other God. He's the only God that can do what he does, hallelujah, that created the heavens and the earth and all other things. I'm not going to get into a lot of that uh, this morning because I'm going to be in some of that tonight. And if you want to hear some of that tonight, be here because it's going to be good. It's going to be talking about uh, he's a true living God, the only God, amen. These other things the world tries to create and come up with, uh, they dead gods, they can't do nothing. There, and some of the other gods uh, that the man has created is dead in the grave. They can't do nothing. But our God is sovereign. He can do anything. Did you know nothing's impossible with him? Hallelujah, praise God. He's an awesome God. Let's look a little bit further. Let's look in Psalms 102, 25. The work of his hands, he's created these things, praise God. It says right here, of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens, there they are again, are the works of thy hands. You see, there's a true, real, materialistic heaven up there, y'all, just like is here. Did you know that? Well, you, you look at that and say, well, God's come down to this earth that he created, Jesus, his son, the Holy Ghost. They've been here. They've been seen. And man, we, by the way, we was made in God's image. You know that, don't you? And, uh, uh, Brother Nathan preaches that a lot in uh, Genesis 126, I believe. We're made in the image of God. Well, he's been down here. He's been seen, and he is the creator, and he's up in heaven. He made heaven before he made the earth. And uh, one day he's going to leave that heaven up there and he's going to come down here with new Jerusalem and some of the things and he's going to dwell upon this earth for eternity. That's what he's going to do. And guess what? We're going to be with him. Amen. We're going to be with him. Isn't that going to be exciting? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look here. 
<coughs> excuse me, let's look at the uh, uh, Revelations 5, 13, inhabited. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessings and honor and glory and power be unto them that setteth on the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Praise God. Every creature, everything's going to be under him. Why? He created everything. Amen. Let's look a little bit further right here. And uh, let's look at Revelations 4.11. And we're going to talk about some materialistic things here. Look here. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. Thou art and were created. What did it say? Our Lord has created all things, praise God. He created the heavens too. And we're going to get to go up there and be with him. We're going to be up there for a while. But you think about it. You know, when I was uh, younger in Christ, I didn't realize. I thought, man, when you died, you're going to heaven. When, by the way, if you're a Christian, when you do die, you do go to heaven. Immediately, uh, your spirit, man, spirit, woman, uh, soul will go to be with the Lord until it's united with your body, and your body will become an incorruptible body just like who has? Jesus. We'll have one like his, and uh, amen, hallelujah. Now, that's exciting to know that but when I was a, a young Christian uh, and I wasn't really deep in the Word, uh, I got to look and I said, man, we die, we're going to heaven. Well, guess what? We're going to go to heaven, but we ain't going to hang up there for eternity. We're going to leave heaven and come back to this earth. Come back to this earth. Yes, because it's going to be a sinless society after the millennium reign that Christ and the saints, that's us, uh, uh, rid this earth, help him, rid this earth of all rebellion. And at the end of that rebellion, we see in God's word where he comes down uh, from the third heaven up there. We're talking about this morning. The great white throne judgment will take place. Amen. And all those will be called out of hell and judged and cast back into hell. That's called the second death. But then after that, uh, praise God, we're going to have a new heaven, new earth, which is uh, 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 it's going to be like uh, 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 do some uh, remodeling per se. It's going to be fixed correctly like God meant it to be in the first place. Amen. And praise God, they're going to be new Jerusalem's going to come down and dwell upon this uh, earth for eternity. And God, uh, the Father and the Son will rule and reign in the Holy Ghost forever in there. Hallelujah. And we'll rule and reign with him and we'll be with him for eternity, not just 60, 70, 80 years, but for eternity. Think about that. But we're going to get to go to heaven. I'm excited about that. That's going to be a good time. We're going to go up there for seven years uh, if we get raptured out of here. And we'll be with the Lord and we'll dine at his table up there. Amen. And then we'll come back down here with him and help him do the things uh, uh, that he wants us to do. Amen. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. Praise God. Let's look a little bit further and look in Romans 1.20. It talks about all material things like we have down here. They got up there. Now, what did Moses do when God uh, talked to Moses and revealed some stuff in heaven to Moses? And he told Moses, I want you to make the tabernacle, not the temple, but the tabernacle. I want you to make it like this. And I want you to make the Ark of the Covenant. And I want you to make the candlesticks, uh, the menorah, which is the six, uh, seven candlesticks uh, of gold that would set there. I want you to make it just like what you see in, in heaven. Uh-huh. Moses seen it, and he made the examples of what he seen down here on earth. So it was materialistic up there already. Amen? Let's look right here. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, I'll tell you right now. There is materialistic things up there, and we're going to look at uh, some of the things. I'll, I'll tell you, what's some of the stuff's up there? We're going to look at it. There's musical instruments up there, y'all. I read my Bible and it tells me we're going to be, uh, all of us going to have harps, and we're going to praise the Lord and, and do some of the singing and praising we was doing. There's musical instruments up there. We can look uh, on the Scriptures, and we'll see it in the Scriptures. Amen. And there's furniture up there. I could get into all the Scriptures and tell about furniture. There's floors up there. Uh, there's food, there's books up there. Is your name written in the book? Is your name written in the book? Amen. There's books up there. The Bible talks about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll tell you right now, there's clothing, 
These trees, it talks about those trees growing down the river, the trees of life, and you get the leaves and eat them and do some of those things. Look here. These streets, <coughs> excuse me, and one other one I really like, it talks about a mansion. I never will forget one time when I went to Biltmore House and seen it, great thing. It took them five years to build that place. It's really a nice place, you know. But I looked at that and I said, you know, that's a, a mansion here on this old earth thing. But I'm here to tell you right now, man, this is a dump compared to what I got in heaven, amen. We got mansions in heaven, the Bible says so. The Bible says in, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, John 1, uh, John 14, 1 through 3, in my, ho- in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you where I'm at, you're going to be too. Is that what God's word says? In John 14, 1, 3, I love it, don't you? Look at here. Now let's go a little bit further right here and look. You know, we can encourage each other this morning with these words, y'all. Think about it. <clears throat> let's look at uh, Philippians 2.10. Philippians 2.10 says, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under there. See, there it is. What it is? Things in heaven. Things in heaven, they're going to have to bow. We're going to bow and praise him up there, ain't we? You better get ready to praise him, worship him together because we're going to do it up there. Look at here. In heaven and things in the earth, uh, we're going to bow down here to him too. And it said that the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Amen. Look at here. And, and it says right here, what does it say? Things under the earth. I preached about that last week about hell and the things under the earth, Sheol and Hades. That's hell and some of those places there. Now, let's go a little bit further right here and look. This is, this is exciting, isn't it? Because we're going to be there, y'all. We've got something to look forward to. God's given us his uh, word, which is the Holy Bible, and we can see uh, 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 what's going to happen to us. Amen, the Christians. Praise God. <clears throat> let's look a little bit further right here. It says uh, that the name of Jesus. Now, let's go to uh, Revelations 21.2. It said... Paul the Revelator said, I see a holy city. I see it with my eyes. It's in heaven. That's where he's talking about right here. Revelations uh, 21, 2 tells us, look at here. And I, John, it said, I, John, saw uh, the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. What? It said, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of where? Heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, there it is, heaven right there. John uh, the Revelator seen heaven with his eyes, amen? He's seen it, hallelujah, praise God. He saw a holy city, amen? Now, let's look at that. Uh, you think there going to be any animals up there? You ever think about that? You know, we got them dogs that we love and them kitties and all them animals that God's given us, you know, these, these are going to be animals up there. I, I read my Bible and I see it. If you don't believe it, look in God's Word and it says, uh, you see the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he's on a great white horse, amen, and he got a sword, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, there's an animal, I see that, and don't you, amen. Let's look right here. Now let's look in uh, Revelation 19 for just a, a, a couple of scriptures right there. I believe uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will show what I want, not the whole thing. But it's talking about a white horse. And I, John, saw the, oh, oh it's the wrong one. <laughs> Revelation 19, Ronnie, just start out in one there until I get, uh, uh, here we go. And after these things, I heard a great voice of heaven, people in, where are they at? People in heaven saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Who in heaven. Let's go to the next verse. Uh, for the true righteousness are his judgments. Uh, he hath judged the great whore which uh, did corrupt the earth and her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants uh, at her hand. And again, they say, hallelujah, and smoke rose up uh, forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and they worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, amen, hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants that fear him, both small and great. And as it, uh, I heard it was the voice of great multitude, and the voice were many waters, and the voice were mighty thunder, and saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And uh, let us uh, be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. The marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife uh, hath made herself ready. 
And uh, uh, I want to, let me see right here. There's one. Yeah, yeah, I see it. This is it. And was granted that she should array in fine linen, clean and white, and fine linen in the righteous of saints. Now, as we go through this uh, uh, chapter 19 here, we'll see our Lord coming back. Here it is. Uh, it's, uh, well, uh, and he, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, right, blessed, uh, uh, the serpent. let's go to the next one, Ronnie. I'm looking for one. Uh, to go to another one. It's on there. Oh, here it is right here. Here it is. This is what I'm trying to show y'all. These animals in heaven, y'all. It said, to the, it said the lion will lay down with the lamb too. Look at here. I saw heaven open and behold a what? A white horse. He that set up him was called faithful and true and righteousness. Uh, he doeth judge and make war. You see that horse there, don't you? I just want to get that in the first. Look here. Let's look at uh, Genesis 5, 24. Uh, men have been taken to heaven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And lived up there for a thousand years. Enoch did. Look right here. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. Why? For God took him. So he's in heaven. That's about 5,000 years ago. Enoch walked with God. He loved God. And, uh, all, and he was, uh, yeah. Five days to him. Yeah, hey. Five days to him, Woody. That's right. Think about it. He's in heaven with the Lord now. We see that God took him. Let's look. We can see in, in Hebrews 11, 5. Let's look at Hebrews 11, 5. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is good, ain't it? It just tells us of what's going to happen to us, y'all. By faith, Enoch was what translated that he should not see death and was not found. So he didn't die when he went to heaven. He's in heaven with the Lord now in his earthly body. Now look at here. And one day we're going to have an incorruptible body just like Jesus has. Amen. Look at here. And, and uh, that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had his testimony that he pleased God. Now, I tell you right now, one of my prayers this morning is a lot of times I pray, God, I want to be pleasing to you. God, I want to please you. I want to live my life the way you want me to. I want to be directed by your path. I want to hear your voice, and I want to be pleasing to you, God. Amen? Oh, Enoch was pleased by God, wasn't he? He was pleased so much, God took him. Amen? Woo, I like that, don't you? Let's look at another one that has been taken. Let's look at, <clears throat> excuse me, let's look at, oh, uh, well, we, let, let's look at Revelations 11, 3 through 11. It talks about the two witnesses. Revelation 3 through 11 talks about Enoch and Elijah. Let's look right here. <coughs> excuse me. Revelation 11, 3 through 11. Praise the Lord. It's exciting to talk about heaven, isn't it? Praise God. Well, you know, the other day I was talking about a destructive place called hell. We ain't got to worry about that because we're going to be in this one. Amen. Look at here. It says, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. That's who I talked about early. And they shall proph uh, prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's about three and a half years. Clothed in sackcloth. And uh, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must be, he must in his, in this manner be killed. These have power to shut up heaven that no rain, not in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to submit the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, they're going to have some, a lot of awesome power, ain't they, when they come down here. Uh, let's look a little further here. Now, look here. And it said, And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Okay, let's look what happens. And the dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is Jerusalem, spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, 
where also our Lord was crucified. Where was he crucified? He was crucified in Jerusalem. Now let's look a little bit, one more here. Anyway, their bodies is going to lay there dead. Uh, uh, it said right here, and the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see uh, their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And uh, they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God, you know, only God can do this, by the way, <clears throat> the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell on them which saw them. And guess what? They ascended back up into heaven. Now, I want to tell you something. Now, how do you think uh, those people of the earth are going to see those two dead prophets laying in the street of Jerusalem for three days? Man, we got technology. GPS knows what you're doing right now. They can beam down on your car, your head, your house. We got... Uh, 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 Learning technology every six months uh, or to a year doubles today. Can you imagine 115 years ago, the turn of the century? Man, we didn't have a light bulb. We didn't have a car. We didn't have computers. We didn't have a washing machine. We didn't have none of that stuff. But the last 100 years, 115 years or so, all this stuff has come out to us. We got cars, chariots with lights on them. Hadn't we? we got awesome weapons that can destroy humanity by the millions. It's an awful thing. We got light bulbs we can turn on. We got computers that tells you what to do, you know. Get up in the morning and brush your teeth. I mean, that's what it's coming to, you know. And uh, we got all that technology today. Well, when these uh, two witnesses uh, die in the streets of Jerusalem, I feel sure that the technology we have will be able to show that around the world. Look at here, the two prophets uh, that come from God. Look at them now. They did. They thought they, the devils and his armies thinks, hey, we got them whooped. But in about three days, they're going to have a hard problem. You see, they're going to have, the people of the world going to have a hard problem because we, the church, are going to be raptured out. We're going to be in heaven. But when this happens down here, it's the tribulation time that the Bible talks about. Those three and a half years and the prophets, uh, uh, the two witnesses, when they are killed and lie in the streets, uh, guess what? In three days, God Almighty, who's the one who can give life and he can take it. He's going to give it to them and bring them back up because why? He's God. He can do that. And he said in his word he would do that. So, see, we can trust God in what he has done for us because everything we're seeing and talking about this morning is going to be fulfilled because God said it would be. And I believe God, don't you? I believe every word he says. I believe that uh, book, the Bible he has given us from the front to the back. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's exciting this morning, y'all, to know that we're going to be in heaven with the Lord for a while, and then we're going to get to come back. Man, we're going to do some traveling. We've got a lot of things to be excited about. Amen. And we're going to have a body like uh, our brother Jesus has got. Amen. Did you know that you, man and woman, are, and you got Jesus in your heart and you're a believer? You are a child of the king. By the way, the king. Ha <laughs> ha. And his empire, nobody will be able to destroy or conquer or tear down in any way. Because he said it in his word, it's going to come to pass just like he said. Now, I got to one more scripture that I want to read you. <clears throat> I want to read you Luke 10, 20. Talks about heaven again. Can you imagine? In the New Testament, I want to read this. Luke 10, 20. Y'all might get excited over this one too. Look at here. Notwithstanding... In this rejoice. Did you know you're supposed to rejoice in what we're talking about this morning, y'all? Rejoice over this. Hallelujah. Praise God. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you. Did you know you have power and authority? You can command the evil spirits that's uh, messing with somebody or your family or something like that to go in the name of Jesus and they got to obey because you are a child of God and he dwells in you and you have the authority to do that. Amen. Let's look a little bit further. It said that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names is written in what? A book, materialistic book in heaven. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. 
That's what we've been talking about here this morning. We've been talking about heaven, praise God, up above the starry skies, up above the clouds, a place called heaven. <coughs> it's a materialistic place up there that our king dwells up there, praise God. And we're going to be with him one day, and then we're going to come back with him one day to rule and reign. Think about it. We can rejoice this morning, y'all. We can be happy because uh, we see what God's word said. It's truth, Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I like to comfort uh, one another about that one day. You know, I tell you right now on the deathbed, when I'm around people that has to go on and be with the Lord, if they got Jesus in their heart, they just passing over to the other side. You see, uh, my brother Roy, he's on the other side over there. Oh, yeah, me and Roy used to talk about it sometimes. He always thought that Moses and Elisha would be the two witnesses. And I always thought it was going to be Enoch and Elijah. But you know, me and him love each other, and it don't matter which one it is. They still going to do the job. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And what can we do this morning? We can rejoice that our name are written in heaven. When you become a believer, when you said yes to the Lord and decided to follow Jesus, your name is written in that book. Amen. So rejoice at that. And don't listen to the devil. The devil's a liar. Don't listen to him. And if he tries to tempt you in doing something uh, you know you ain't supposed to be doing, you ask God to help you overcome it. And guess what? He will. He will. I want every head bowed, please. I want to talk to the Internet. I just want to tell you folks on the Internet, uh, uh, this morning we love you so much. Uh, and we know that the Spirit of God is going over those airways. And some of you have been watching this message. And you want to be involved in this heaven thing. You can do it. If you will become a believer and ask Jesus to come in your heart. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, ask him and he'll reveal himself to you. If you're sincere in your heart and you want to know the true living God, he will reveal himself to you and you'll know. And you can make a decision. Yes, I'm going to be a believer. If you want to be a believer this morning, pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, please forgive me for my sins, God. And God, I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross. I believe he was buried and rose on the third day. And your word says, your word, it is written, thou shalt be saved. And I claim it. And if you've done that, I want you to write us a little note and say, Brother Rick, I have received Jesus as my Lord. I'm a believer now. Click up in that right-hand corner of that uh, uh, computer, whatever you own, and Jot us a little message. I challenge you to do that. Let us know that you've received the Lord Jesus in your heart. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. God bless you in Jesus' name. Every head bow. Let me ask you something.